Have you ever wondered how does the future look like? I guess yes. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how does the city of the future look like? Often when we think about it, we tend to think about something like this, something that is highly connected, something with a lot of technologies, with very fast transportation. And when technology is very useful, well, is it exactly what we need? When we are living in a world where we need to be close to carbon neutrality, or even being carbon neutral, is it what we need? When we are about to dwell 5 billion people on the planet, is it really what we need? What if we have it wrong? Let me tell you a little story. I come from a small village in north of France. Um, I come exactly here. And, well, yes, you see, um, everybody talks about AI. Sometimes I feel my, my design skills are stuck with Microsoft 95. <laughs> um, and I grew up around nature. And I spent my childhood there. And then when, you know, teenagehood happened, then you also want things to change a little bit. Um, so basically, I escaped, <laughs> and I arrived here. I arrived <laughs> in Singapore. And this, you can imagine that it was quite a drastic change, right? And basically, when I arrived here, it kind of felt like the city of the future. Fast transportation, highly connected, lot of technologies. And I later moved to Bangkok, and it kind of felt the same way. And then I realized that there was one problem. I realized that air conditioning was a big problem. In buildings, 60% of electricity, electricity consumption of a building is due to air conditioning. In the world, 3% of the carbon emission is due to air conditioning only. It's roughly the same as aviation industry. But in some cities in the region, it can go up to 30%. And when aircon has been invented more than a century ago, and the technology improved, technology, the technology didn't really change that much. So then I thought, what could we do? And what can I do? So I turned to this man, Gunther Poli. Gunther Poli is called the Steve Jobs of sustainable development. He's a serial entrepreneur, and is, uh, he created a movement called the Blue Economy. Basically, you take a waste, you had knowledge, and you have an asset. He's a type of person that focus on nature beforehand. And by focusing on nature, it makes also a lot of sense, financially speaking. One of his first companies was a detergent company. He had a revolutionary recipe, natural. To make it public, he invited a bunch of journalists in a restaurant, he ordered a salad, and used his own detergent as a salad sauce. <laughs> He's a kind of genius that has 30 or 40 years ahead of everybody. And well, I did this more than 30 years ago. It's a type of person who incentivizes his own employees to cycle to the office. He got fined by his own government to do so. And some years later, the same government decided that it was actually a good idea so they incentivize everybody in the country to cycle to their office. Genius. He was way ahead of everybody. And so I reached out to him and I asked him, Gunther, how can we solve this aircon issue? How can we help cities to reduce drastically their carbon footprint linked to air conditioning? And he said, well, Brice, it's very simple. 
Yeah, because for him, everything is very simple. <laughs> he said, look at what we have done in RRA, in Zimbabwe. In this building that has been built in 96, 1996, we have no air conditioning. We are in the tropics. And still, we have temperature that is very chill inside. How this is possible? Well, we use what we call biomimicry. So we copied what Thermite Mount used to do. In Thermite Mount, you have very cool temperature inside, even though you are in the middle of the desert. Even though you are under 40 degrees, like here in Australia. The way to do it is very simple. You put some shelter on top of windows. You couple it with plants so then the sun doesn't come in. At the bottom, you have fan, so then you have hair coming in. You may mix it with water as well. And you have the cold air that arrives from the floor and the heat is released from the ceiling and then goes out of the building from a big chimney. Very simple, and yet, we kind of forgot about it. Another technology that is very interesting is this one in the desert in the Middle East. It's called wind catcher. And so, like the name says it, it will catch the wind on top of the roofs. The air will come down. We arrive in the houses. Sometimes we have water as well, so then the two mix will bring cold air and the heat will get removed as well, quite naturally. This has been invented 3,000 years ago. Brand new, isn't it? <laughs> well, the scale of humanity is brand new, but the scale of technology is not, all right? And this is something that we cannot forget. We don't really um, remember how to do that. This type of technology is this one brand new. It will blow the air from the top to bring it at the bottom with a blower in the middle, right? This is uh, basically made by bamboo, right? The air will come down through the bamboo pipe. We cover water on the top, so then we have cool air that is coming, and we can drop temperature from 30 degrees to 24 degrees Celsius. We may have this in city centers, in walking streets, even in cafe or restaurants. And then I thought, is there something that could be even simpler for people? Well, there are some technologies that exist. One thing that is very trendy today is to use white paint, right? We think, why 2023? We use white paint. Well, yeah, because we can save 15% on aircon consumption, air con consumption with white paint. We just cover the roofs and the walls, and we save a lot of energy. And nature knows this pretty well. If we have this in cities, that would make a lot of sense, right? Because when we have hot city like this one, it will, we, we, we kind of know. I mean, we know already that we will drastically cool the temperature down, and it will probably make it look nicer as well. Well, in Greece, they knew, they knew that thousands of years ago, and yet we kind of forgot about it. So now I keep the last solution for you, which is, to me, clearly the best. A solution that helps us to save 25% energy on air conditioning while purifying the air. A solution that I believe we should have everywhere. A solution that anybody can use. Four years ago, I decided to launch my own business and to provide sustainability solution to companies so then they could drastically decrease their carbon footprint. We have been offering this solution to companies and now we have been working with 30 big companies in Singapore. We have it in 22 countries around the globe, and it's today one of the fastest growing sustainable solutions that we have on the market. Something 
very simple, something we should have everywhere. I will just close this talk with a little story. A story that comes from South America and that get popularized by the writer um, Pierre Rabhi. The story says there is a fire in the forest and all the animals are living, all of them but one, the hummingbird. The hummingbird is taking some water onto the lake to drop it onto the fire. And all the animals looking at him, they say, hummingbird, what are you doing? Do you really think you're going to stop the fire just on your own? And he says, no, I know I will not. But at least I do my part. We created a community of people who think as hummingbirds. We remind ourselves every day that we need to live as hummingbirds. And we need hummingbirds to transform the city and the world that we want to live in tomorrow. Thank you very much.